Good morning and welcome to Business Matters Talk Show. I'm Charles Musgrove with the Bean Team. We're an accounting firm with offices in Tallahassee, Florida and Miramar Beach, Florida. We're going to address the hot topics in business and the basics to operating your business successfully. Our goal is to devote our time to talk about real business problems and the practical solutions from the experts. Today we're joined by Scott Cowan. Scott, it's a pleasure that you're joining us for another session. Uh, Happy to be here. Thank you. Great. I know that you have experience working with the large firms, the Fortune 500 clients. You also have a lot of experience with the small business owner. And we've worked Correct. together on several issues uh, from all types of employment law matters that, that I see with my clients. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that we worked very closely with and one thing that is always seems to be a hot topic and, and that's uh, independent contractor yep sure. uh, I don't I don't know what it is about that Scott but it's uh, that question comes up whether it's a it's a roofer contractor if it's uh, a barber shop uh, if it's a hair salon it is it's it's all it's just a prevalent issue that business owners grapple with is it an employee is it an independent contractor and of course, the, the employer, a lot of times, they want to default to an independent contractor relationship right. because they perceive there are certain advantages at from an accounting standpoint. They think it may be cheaper and it shields them more from liability protection. But Correct. man, I'll tell you, I have seen where that is, that is the opposite and they just step into, uh, a, it's almost like the, they're out of the frying pan into the fire. So. Um, let's 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 delve into that and let's talk about the. Um, I know we're going to touch on some accounting matters too, but really this is a this is a legal issue, and there's there's gray areas, there's right and wrong, black and white. So uh, let's 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 hit those. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, great topic. Uh, common issue that pops up, especially uh, in a number of ways in today's economy, but. With small business owners, um, you know, they might need some temporary assistance or, uh, you know, if they don't want to have a full-time employee or they may need somebody who just handles technology or somebody to come in and fill a certain role. They might not have the, the capital um, to the capital outlay for an employee. Uh, so a lot of startups have independent contractors. And in today's world, uh, you may have heard of the, the concept of a gig economy. Uber, you know, with, with all the uh, Uber drivers, that, those are all independent contractors. There's a whole other um, industry or marketplace, if you will, for em, uh, employment or work under the gig economy. So, yeah, it, that's an issue, the, the independent contractor. It's, it's from somebody who's just starting out to, to companies that have uh, thousands and thousands of employees. Uh, and so, you know, what is the issue? Why? It's been around for, uh, I think I read today, like a 1930s uh, United States Supreme Court decision on when does somebody become an employee versus when are they an independent contractor. Um, ultimately, the way I answer that question, Charles, just to give you the real practical uh, answer, is is the, the, the individual worker, uh, in this case, the person who's gonna be the independent contractor, is that independent contractor in business for himself or herself? Just like you and your business, uh, my business, we have expenses, we make decisions uh, with respect to the clients. Nobody really tells us what to do, although sometimes clients give us a little bit of, uh, uh, of suggestions on what they'd like to do. But in general, uh, you know, we're, we're in business for ourselves, and that's how, if you're going to use uh, labor or a worker as an independent contractor, Think under the very, very broad umbrella, very practical umbrella of, is that person truly in business for himself or herself? And that will answer a lot of questions. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. And, and uh, I guess my, my default answer when, an, when a client brings that to me is, if you're asking me the question, treat them as an employee. And we start from that perspective. Because usually the ones they have a question about, it's not an established business. Correct. It's, it's one person that is that they want to engage in some service and really they're going to be an employee because the person doesn't work for multiple uh, clients they have one client and that the one I'm talking to is a, is usually their exclusive client so I usually start with the default answer of treat them as an employee that's the safer route to go yeah it is definitely the safer route uh, I think that's uh, from a legal perspective 
and an accounting perspective. I know you have a lot of uh, clients in the accounting arena, and they end up with the IRS. Uh, so that's a problem that you see on my end. Uh, I might see an IRS issue, but I'll see a number of other uh, very, very expensive issues, whether the, the, uh, the worker was misclassified as an independent contractor, he or she should have been an employee, they have workers' compensation exposure, they have, uh, they have unemployment, failure to pay unemployment compensation, they have failure to pay overtime exposure. They have so much exposure, if it's, it's really, it can be a do or die issue, if you will, from a business standpoint. So you really have to be very, very careful. So the conservative play is certainly in a gray area you want to default to an employee. I'll give a caveat to that. There are ways to have an independent contractor relationship. It's just a lot of businesses just don't get it done right. Yeah, if you, those are great points. Scott, if, if, uh, if you're just joining us now, you are listening to Business Matters on Real Talk 93.3. We talk about real business problems, real solutions, and we get experts in like Scott Callum. Scott is uh, talking to us today about the independent contractor versus employee issue. That's a, that's a common issue that I see in the accounting world with my clients. Uh, it's got tax ramifications, it's got employment law ramifications, it's, Correct. you name it, it's a, it's a bucket of mess if you don't deal with it correctly. And there's, there's legal documentation that you should, you should use if you're going to treat them as an independent contractor very much so, yes. And there's there's ish, there's legal documents that you need to use as an employee also, but it's more important and, and usually safer if you have those IC agreements if you're going to treat them as an employment as an independent contractor. So touch on some of those the the formal documents that need to be in place to give that that employer that business owner the protection they need. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At a very minimum, um, it's not necessarily set forth in law. There's no law that says. The independent contractor has to have a written uh, independent contractor agreement. Uh, but it's just prudent, and uh, it may not say that in the law, but let's just say without an independent contractor agreement, you're really a sitting duck, if you will, as a business owner. So you want a very, um, I'll use the word sophisticated, but I don't want to use that word in such a way that uh, it's not applicable to, to small business owners. But you, you need an independent contractor agreement. Uh, it to be signed by the company and the independent contractor, uh, but it needs to be vetted or explored uh, and certain provisions added by an attorney, maybe through advice of uh, an accountant as well. But that's, that's, the, that's the starting point is an independent contractor agreement. So get that signed. Uh, what I see uh, the problem with a lot of uh, independent contractor arrangements is the independent contractor agreement either was, uh, was, was provided to the business owner through a friend or they downloaded it off of Google, or they got it from freeforms.com and just making up a website, or some other lawyer send it to them and it doesn't really apply. Uh, you want legal advice to make sure this is the right agreement, but there's also protections. If you're going independent contractor route, it's such a, a, an expensive liability if you get it wrong. The agreement needs to have certain provisions, like I add uh, arbitration provisions at times, I make sure the independent contractor is agreeing that they're, they, they are going to do this as opposed to being told they're going to do this. And um, there's several other provisions that I import into my agreements that are not in the standard agreements. And the agreements I typically see, I call them napkin agreements, they actually at times hurt more than they help. And they also, last thing, is that an independent contract agreement, just because an independent contractor has signed it, it is not the end-all, be-all legal safe we have an agreement therefore there's no liability it's about what the parties actually do in the relationship but the terms in the independent contractor agreement they also need to be uh, relevant and up to date yeah the uh, you know how you treat those those workers if they're an employee versus an independent contractor also falls over into insurance issues you know if you are if you use a, a PEO for your payroll and your workers' comp insurance, those PEO arrangements exclude uninsured contractors. Correct. So if you have an independent contractor agreement and that's Joe Smith that is driving a truck and doesn't have workers' comp insurance or any other type of insurance, you could have a, a huge liability there and not even recognize it. So unfortunately, you find out about those issues after there's a problem. 
Yes. Usually the way uh, I get drawn into the issue is um, usually the, uh, uh, the company who's using an independent contract agreement, the worker uh, is terminated and then they go file for unemployment compensation and uh, next you know it, there's no unemployment compensation insurance and the division of state wants to know why isn't this person employed? Yep, that, that's uh, real life. When we get back, we're going to talk more about the uh, independent contractor issues, and we're going to delve into the exempt versus non-exempt employees. You're listening to Business Matters here on Real Talk 93.3. We'll be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> 